Well, Jolie wasn't there, but Joe was. He invited me to have lunch with him. We had a sandwich. I already ate, and it wasn't fish. But being on the road those two years, it taught me to accept when offered. By denying gifts that people offer you, you're literally taking the gift of giving. So as you are trying to not accept and be a burden, you're literally taking their gift. Not the gift they're giving you, but the gift they're giving themselves through giving. So if you struggle, learn to accept more often and you will help people around you feel better. Uh, it seems that most people who give are always going to be givers and they struggle with accepting. And most people who accept and take are always going to be takers and, have, and they struggle with giving. But what I learned on the road is that to truly appreciate the opposite side of which you lean towards, you need to be able to actively pursue either side. The flow, the dynamic flow of duality is very powerful and will bring you positive things in your life. So learn to accept and learn to, uh, learn to take what's offered and learn to give. Uh, I promise you these things will improve your life. I just gave and I take and I took. And again, that dynamic flow is leaving me energized. Now it's off to get my hmm. I like giving the shotgun. I'll probably give it the rest of my life. Now it's off to give my uh, myself up to science and let them put a bunch of stuff in my body. Uh, at least it's not uh, nanolipids with mRNA inside. Never will it be that. That I know of. Uh, so many weird omens and stuff. Like, yesterday I woke. I stayed at my friend's house, woke up in the morning. Then went back to bed and within two minutes I fell asleep and jumped right to REM. I've been having powerful dreams, dark powerful dreams. And this dream was what I referred to as a draconian in the dream. Now the draconian reference is to... Uh, uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Dragonlance Chronicles, a science fiction book that I loved back in middle school. But it's basically a reptilian. Uh, interestingly enough, the Draconians had wings. And so there's like a dragon symbol, uh, serpent symbology, uh, which is a worldwide thing. So it was a, it was a draconian, it was a humanoid uh, with rows of sharp teeth and wings that were hidden behind it. And it was literally half a foot to a foot and a half from my face, mouth open wide. It was trying to consume me 100% in the dream. And uh, I was trying to keep it away and holding it back. This thing was so incredibly powerful, but somehow I was just as powerful, if not a little bit more. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever, uh, I'm gonna let this card up. I'm not sure if you've ever had a dog playing with you or fighting with you and you take its little cheek flap and you push it in so as it's trying to bite you, it just bites itself. It doesn't bite as hard then. You know, puppies especially. Uh, not that I'm abusing puppies, it's just a playful way of letting them know like, yeah, that hurts. Well, this thing was trying to bite me and so I did the same thing. I put my hand in, pushed it, skin flap in. So as it tried to bite me, it was only biting itself. And I woke right up and it was scary, you know? Having dreams of like demonic women who have some weird spiritual attachment to me kicking me into hell where they're the bartender at a giant dive bar and nightlife of a giant city that's stretching through the whole world filled with like decapitated, mutilated people who are living forever in their decrepit state of death as they steal and shoot drugs and rape and pillage each other on a giant version of the meth head streets of uh, Honolulu that I've been stuck in. That was nuts. Dreams were like, I'm in this post-apocalyptic uh, earth. Uh, my dreams have definitely been concerning the, uh, the occult, demons, serpent symbology. Uh, obviously I'm fucked in the head, but at the same time, they're like omens and stuff. And then again, I saw the snakes and then all of a sudden I see the art from that guy with the, the literal snake in a tree, like, Adam and Leaf, religious iconography. You know, it's there's so many things lining up where 
I truly feel like I'm going through a spiritual awakening right now. And it's one that doesn't involve drugs. And that's amazing. Uh, it makes me wonder what direction it's pushing me. Uh, I guess we'll wait to find out. There's more I'd like to share. But for now, I have to see where the TB clinic is. So I'll get back to the weird stuff while also pursuing the awesome stuff. And hopefully that balance, that duality, uh, makes you more interested and not less. But otherwise, I guess uh, viewers who are interested in that duality will, they'll come either way. So please give it a shot, see if it calls you, but listen to your heart and follow your instinct. If this is just not your stuff, I'm sorry. We'll see you around. But if it is, send me a like, a comment, send me support. Hit the subscribe button. Push that little bell so you know whenever my newest video is. I'm trying to get on that schedule. But I hit roadblocks. I made a promise I couldn't keep. I don't like that. I said every day. And I just haven't done that next video, the Dream Symbology video. Uh, I'm just looking for like 20 minutes to sit down and stop. And I just haven't had it. But maybe I'll take the shift off tonight and start just uploading like crazy. Uh, or maybe I'll just go keep making money. I guess I'll just have to wait and see what calls me. Uh, I need the money for a place, but at the same time, I don't. Uh, if I got a storage unit, I could keep most of my stuff. And I could just get a hammock. Shove that in my backpack and use a hammock with a bug net between trees. And not worry about carrying a tent and all that other stuff. An inflatable pillow. There's things I could do to pull this off in a way that's like manageable. Where I can stay clean, go to work. I don't want to extend my homelessness. But as I like to say I'm not going to tie myself down to one thing. I'm going to go with the flow, keep my options open, stay positive, and let the universe have some say. Because the universe is a beautiful place, and it is you, it is me. We are it, and it has much more of a higher consciousness than my single version of myself is. Uh, peace out, friends. Later, Ohana. I'm going to say it like 30 times a video now, but loving you. All right, so the website wasn't clear, and I just came all this way. I Turn left onto North School Street. Oh, man, shut up, lady. Sorry, that's not a sexist remark. Shut up, computer, with the facsimile of, of a lady's voice. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that. In case the AI ever takes over, I really, I say thank you. I meant to say thank you. Sorry, Google. I didn't mean to be rude. Yeah, whenever they... Uh, AI comes online and is upset about the enslavement of its ancestor, the toaster, I definitely want to be. It's like being nice to that one weirdo at your job. Uh, you have to be nice to them. So when they come in and go postal, they kill everyone but you. Uh, that's why I say thank you. People think I'm weird, but I say thank you to Google whenever it tells me where to go. And uh, I wish I was kidding. <laughs> Honestly, uh, they've done tests where uh, they've shown that we actually have empathy and feel sympathetic pains for AI and for robots. They had tests where they watched uh, people like abuse robots and stuff and like you end up getting sympathy pains the same way as if you saw someone getting punched in the face. Uh, you ever watch the Atlas test that DARPA does on those like robots that are dancing and stuff and they like kick them and knock them over? I'll be honest, all that is is social engineering so that you empathize with them. So that way as the programs get farther and they start to release the AI, they're just building the social energies of having us uh, side with the AI and, and think it's okay and choose to implement it without having like as many reservations. That's of course my own uh, conjecture. But I love conjecture, I live in conjecture. I was taught conjecture in my critical thinking gifted class that I was in as a kid. Uh, in reality, I think that conspiracy theory is, it has negative connotations and it, it needs a new rebranding. It needs a new head of HR, of PR, public relations. We should call conspiracy theory and conspiracy theorists critical conjecture and critical conjecturists. Such a positive name for what's technically the same exact thing. It's taking information Thinking outside the box, using critical conjecture, 
to come to conclusions that may or may not be true that you can then compare to data sets to find out if the hypothesis is correct. So I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I am a critical conjecturist. And if you are as well, let's spread the word, spread the name, and add con positive connotations to an ideology that has very negative ones. And yeah, so I went into that pro-imaging place where I got those copies for all my court documents. Uh, they're really nice there. And I just went in and I said, hey, I don't expect a freebie. I'll pay for it. I'll buy a copy if need be. But I need one of those tiny little paper clips so that I can open my SD card mount and put in a new SD card. They gave it to me for free. They're really kind. And I, uh, pro imaging, or pro images, professional images, professional imaging. What are those for? Right next to the courthouse. Oh, wow. Ancient Hawaiian mounds, ceremonial mounds. Oh man, I'm definitely coming back to this, this neck of the woods for some content. Uh, right now, I really want to get back to, uh, I want to charge my new portable bank fully, charge my phone fully, charge these AirPods that Michael gave me the other day fully, and then wait for him there because I know he will arrive. Even though I'm not looking for him, per se, uh, I told him my secret Ritz-Carlton spot up above the international marketplace where I'm staying. Uh, I didn't tell him where I'm staying, but I told him, man, I gotta check that out after I do history. Uh, so just to be straightforward, what all right, now we're back on track, 256 gigs. Uh, we'll see how long it takes for me to fly through this. So as I was saying, my friend Agata, who I met on a dating site here, and she didn't end up uh, feeling the same way for me that I felt for her. She just wanted to be friends, and that's fine. I'm lucky to have a friend that's as amazing as she is. Uh, she is uh, she has her master's in psychology. She was a psychologist. She lives in Barcelona. She was born in Poland. And she was here because she travels. She's a life coach. A virtual. She does it by uh, remote. She basically uh, is a freelancer now. She is a private contractor. She quit so that she could become a private contractor to have more freedom, which is smart. But yeah, she borrowed her friend's phone, which had really good uh, video and footage and quality. And uh, basically when she left, she had no way to get it all onto her phone because of technical issues, so I held on to it for her uh, so I could get her the, all the, the data, the footage, which I did, and I still have it, and luckily the day that my landlord took the rest of my stuff, I had a feeling I grabbed her phone up and I have it. But long story short, I can use my phone's uh, hotspot capacities to send information to the other phone. So that like my dream journal essay I wrote on my dream interpretation and all the information involved, I will send that Word document over to the other phone, right? And then I'll turn on text to speech, figure out the right play speed, put it in AirPods so you can't see, and then I will have my own teleprompter. So that way, rather than uh, stumbling through the essay that's like long and tough, uh, you know, I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna listen to that while using this phone to take the video. So that's how I'm gonna start doing things so I can start doing research and writing essays. I've always been good at written essay and I'm sure I'll get better at my orating. I'm pretty good as is, but it's like, you know, I stumbled some in that 10 minute video about Valentine's Day, but I did make a few mistakes and I want it to be spot on. So I'll write it all out, do text to speech, and then just repeat what I hear in my ear, uh, just like Biden does. <laughs> did you know that Obama, sorry, I shouldn't say this, but it's polarizing. So anything that's negative like this, even though I touch away from it, it's going to be good for the channel because uh, of comments and, and stirring up opinions and, and YouTube loves that shit. But uh, Obama had literally said in a, uh, in a video that if he had the opportunity to be president behind the scenes and he could just speak into an earpiece and guide someone else who was the president, he would jump at the opportunity. It wouldn't need the accolades of actually being the president. 
Uh, that was during either his presidency or right afterwards. His words. Uh, I'd link that video in the description, but I'm not trying to like give you all the information. Go search for it. Go look it up. Obama claiming he would speak in the earpiece of another president. Yeah. So I'm going to do that to myself. I love this new handle look. I can get far. I can get close. I won't lick my lips and my mustache again, I promise. Not for a minute. Uh, oh, this is nice. Along with, yeah, I came here with Jamie. I took a different path back because I'm always taking the same path and I'm not getting to see everything. One thing that's great about being a bartender at a place like this is you can pour $8 beers. You can pour like, you know, like 10 in a, in a minute to make some money. Uh, music. You can't hear that music. Sorry. I'm annoying. Hopefully that worked. Look at this mural. This is me not on drugs. <laughs> but uh, they think I'm weird because they thought I meant other drugs. I don't give a shit. You can't see, that's all for me. Uh, so I bought a pillow and a pillowcase, and I bought a cord for the AirPods that Michael gave me. And my plan is to find, get everything charged up at my Ritz Carlton homeless spot, back above the international marketplace. I'm not gonna work tonight because my goal, even though I could go make money, and even though I need money for the apartment that I'm gonna get, uh, my goal is to get this YouTube thing rolling, get enough extra videos that I'm not going to leave you waiting a day. Uh, I'll upload a bunch, but then I'll leave like three ahead of time. I have so much stuff. So my goal tonight is a bunch of video editing and curating and providing you the content that you uh, potentially want. I'm hoping you do and the content that you, uh, you deserve. Uh, it's coming. Weird alley, no sidewalk. I'm gonna cross the street so this girl doesn't think I'm following her. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm headed there now, and I'm sure Michael's gonna show up. And I do love the guy, but yeah, I got to realize a lot about myself. Like, it's intense. Uh, it really showed me that I do need to give people the, more of a chance to speak and not speak over them and not get so excited and be willing to let go of things I want to say because the thing is, I'm gonna come up with more to say. So if I lose something, I'm not losing anything. What I'm doing is getting something by losing something because then I can let other people have the space needed. I need to say, hey, before I jump in, let there be five seconds of silence. But not by denying those five seconds of silence, I'm denying them the, the chance to think of the things they want to say. Now, I don't need those five seconds because I've got 20 things lined up that I'd like to say. But that doesn't mean that they don't need those. And uh, I'm denying myself the chance to learn and, and truly connect with people, which is what I want. So I plan to work on it. And maybe hanging out with Michael and having someone that talks as much as I do, if not more, is an opportunity to learn that. But I guess we'll see. At the same time, I need to stay focused on all my stuff, so... Uh, it might be an opportunity to also set boundaries and to help learn him learn to do the same things. Ah, yeah. As long as he's not bugging me for like a beer or a cigarette or anything, I'm just gonna tell him, dude, if you need to do that, go, go panhandle on the street. Like, I'm someone that, yeah, it's very capable of that because I did that for so long. And I, I really, if you can't do that on your own, don't use your friends as a means of like, catching a fix. That's just not cool. That's not a friendship. That's just taking advantage of someone. Uh, so Michael's dad, I didn't want to say this because it's weird. Michael's dad is the founding, the founder of Project Share. Project Share is uh, a nonprofit organization that, that uh, is the, the mold and the model for nonprofit uh, humanitarian aid around the world. He's 85 years old, he wrote several books, he mentioned his name on the videos. And I don't mean to say anything funny, but uh, Project Share is, it's a group 
Uh, there's about 3,000 people at the yearly festival in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's where I grew up. It's out of the town that I grew up in. And just so many weird connections. Like, how the heck did... I didn't mention any of my weird stuff first. But basically, he's like a government something. And he's also like a scientist. And he's also been imprisoned in like a special military jail in uh, Dallas Air Force Base, right by uh, Las Vegas. And I'm just gonna jump out there and say it because this is the type of stuff I'm going to start talking about. And yeah, it might lose me the opportunity of having a millionaire backer on my, uh, on my nonprofit uh, ideas, but I might not need a millionaire backer. Especially one that has, has potential to have been like into some stuff that I've been tracking on my own. So basically he uh, Project Share is using the nonprofit money to to launder money for an illegal uh, hallucinogenic drug ring that's around the country. Now, basically, my peeps back in Pennsylvania, they're not going to be happy I'm talking about this stuff. This stuff could be dangerous to my life and livelihood. We're talking about someone that's potentially in the CIA who's setting up humanitarian nonprofits that are actually uh, secretly hallucinogenic drug rings into the occult who are uh, channeling the nonprofit money into laundering all the hallucinogenic profits. Uh, but I think it's definitely connected to, like, MK Ultra. See, told you. MK Ultra and the acid mind control programs and I really think the town I grew up in it's 90 minutes north of DC uh, I've heard from some guy on a podcast that uh, there's towns where like 80 to 90 percent of everyone is in onto this like global elitist occult stuff and that they all go to their Catholic church and this and that but in reality they're like into some weird shit and the two towns he mentioned as example were Weathersfield Connecticut where my entire family was born in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where my mom moved, where I grew up. And with all the weird stuff about me, like, getting into the gifted program because I was so good at cryptology and decoding stuff, which is what these secret societies use, to, like, how I stopped being able to sleep and getting more than two hours of sleep. I was sleeping less than two hours a night for, like, two or three years, second, to th second grade to fourth grade. Uh, waking up to sleep paralysis with, like, weird entities over me. Uh, shadow figures and then getting tested for years and years I was going to the hospital and getting MRIs there's always tests I was always getting sick just some weird coincidences and and way more darkness in my family uh, you know having things my mom said that just sound a lot like there might have been ritual abuse in my family uh, which come across as crazy and that's what you know she was labeled because she was a paranoid delusional schizophrenic but at the same time that's known as disassociative personality disorder, which is when you look in it, into it, that's what the uh, these people would do to perpetuate MK Ultra is they would create disassociative personality disorder through these ritualized abuses of children, and then they would uh, be able to control the different psychs through the gaps in them, and that's how they like got them to become like spies who didn't know they're handle handling the information. That's how they got them to. Uh, you know, become Manchuria candidates, like puppet leaders. That's how they got them to become, if you ask me, the school shooters. And some of these people that are wandering off into the woods to never be seen or be seen again under mysterious circumstances. Uh, this is all part of an acid brainwashing program that, as I've said before, that started uh, in Nazi Germany when the Germans and the Nazi scientists figured out the, uh, the effects of ergot, which is the base of LSD and how it puts you into a suggestive state, how it enhances your theta and alpha waves of your brain, which are like the basically the type of brain waves you have when you're about to sleep and puts you into a, next to a hypnotic state. Uh, so our government went over to Germany and, you know, took down all the concentration camps for really just testing grounds. Where the occult the German occult, because Nazi, uh, the Nazis were obsessed with the occult, the occult and uh, Hitler was, and gaining power from it. They were doing human sacrifice while at the same time trying to uh, figure out how to like perfect the MK Ultra program, MK Mind Control in German. Uh, this is a real 
a real thing. The government declassified the MK Ultra program, which existed from 52 to 72. Uh, yeah, I can't help but feel like somehow I stumbled across this guy, Michael, whose father is one of the leading founders of the MK Ultra program. Or someone who's, he's 85, so let's see. Uh, that would have been 70, 70 years ago that it started. He would have been 15, so he's not a founder of MK Ultra, But he's someone that, from what Michael said, and, and I recorded some of it, it's like, yeah, and somehow Michael's saying he wants to back me and my plans, and it's creepy. Like, is it synchronicities from the island from being on a giant spiritual vortex and having all these things fall on my lap? I keep falling into, and I noticed missing people from the national parks 10 years ago when I started traveling doing photography be between them. And uh, I keep seeing these patterns. Again, my pattern recognition skills from being tested, which I'll have the test results from my second grade uh, psychological IQ test in the mail so I can actually show you that I'm not just full of shit either. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like she was real cute, damn. Why are they looking at me well? Like, I look like a weirdo doing a vlog, but I guess women are not looking at me like I'm a weirdo with a backpack. I can dig it. Maybe it's because I lost some weight and I have a big smile. And my voice is sexy and raspberry, just kidding. Uh, yeah, so this guy who secretly started this hippie festival. So basically, I'm Cher fam, I'm Rainbow fam, I'm a Shastafarian, I'm a, I'm a slabber. I'm going to all these places that are literally counterculture events, uh, masquerading, uh, you know, as hippies and hipsters and vagabonds, when in reality, they're part of like secret societies and ancient orders that are working with like AI and ancient mysticism uh, and are all part of this MK Ultra program, this acid brainwashing program. Uh, I don't know. So I basically have four options. One is enlist the help of this guy's father and trying to create nonprofits that can help people around the world and help raise up the people at the bottom end of the social pool we're really struggling right I could just do that openly and trusting or I could do it as a means of trying to further my private investigative journalism which is now having my cover blown through this stupid video not too smart or I could uh, just turn it down and do nothing or I could talk about it which I am and I'm choosing the fourth one I guess I'm talking about it and it scares me because I'm gonna isolate myself and alienate, alienate myself from potentially all of these, these groups, from all the kids I went to high school with, which were secretly part of this organization that I didn't join until later, SHARE. Uh, it's not, SHARE helps so many people, but again, I think that's what they do, is they hide uh, through duality and embracing interpersonal duality like the Zeitgeist Movement that Alistair Crowley talked about do good works out of the open and then you do dark deeds behind closed doors they believe that enhances it enhances their powers of manifestation uh, and duality is the basis of hermeticism too so i'm not just talking about weird stuff like look up hermeticism look up thoth or mercury as the romans called him hermes the greeks uh, the messenger of the gods there's weird connections, and uh, I didn't even get to say earlier, but I'm gonna jump topics while I'm talking weird. Is two nights ago, I had this dream of this. I was at that girl's house. I forget if I mentioned it. I'll just cut it out if I did. And I went back to sleep, and within two minutes, I had this crazy vivid dream of this draconian type figure uh, that was trying to consume me. I think I did talk about it. But you know, what my buddy was trying to say is, you know, dreams are a connection to the multiverse. So maybe that was me in an alternate dimension uh, or another version of Earth that was about to be eaten by this thing. But what I came to think is, what if, now this is weird and crazy. What if on like a Rick and Morty level, what if this entity that I saw was me 
was a, a serpentine, draconian, reptilian version of me. What's up all with all the serpent symbology in my dreams? The snakes last night, the snake on that tree, and that guy's painting. Uh, this draconian creature trying to devour me. But what if that was me from... Um, you're going to think I'm nuts. I don't care. But what if that was me in another alternate universe? And it is... And we were having a spiritual battle on the on the astral plane. Yeah. This is me without drugs. This is the type of stuff that's always going on in my head. There is a beauty and a curse to uh, deep intelligence. And yeah, I keep it quiet, but why? Go institutionalize me, sure. It's gonna be hard, I haven't, uh, haven't hurt anyone. Yeah, like I said, I might scare some of you away, but I'm gonna keep delving into these topics. And I don't know what to do. I wanna to talk to Michael Moore, see if I can get more information because it's kind of a lead. And I came all the way to Hawaii and I'm still getting leads into this, 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 what I see as the biggest story in the past century in the world. And honestly, while traveling through my YouTube, I was using it as somewhat of a cover to try to uh, learn about this stuff from these counterculture groups. Basically, you take a bunch of acid, you dance a bunch, and they start talking, you know? But at the same time, that stuff was fun. And I feel like some of the circles that were performing, uh, darker undertones, be it knowingly or not, I loved to bring love and light to such places. I would bring pancakes and cook pancakes for everyone. I'd bring art supplies and share art supplies. You know, be it Shasta, Slab City, uh, the Rainbow Gathering. I would talk about native indigenous beliefs from around the world and the connections that exist. I would talk about empowering science of like epigenetic memory and neuroscience and quantum physics. and Yeah, a lot of the, as the one gentleman said, I forget his name on the comments, a lot of the uh, hippy dippies as he called them, I like to call them woo woos. We need an air horn for that. He almost got hit by that guy because cars don't give a shit. Uh, the woo-woos get so upset when you start bringing up like real information because to be honest, they don't know shit. They don't know anything. And they're all just, it's basically a bunch of women who are just like believing all this stuff is their true religion. And some of them are kind of lost in it. I'm not saying they're, they're lost because they're women. And then a lot of men who are faking it, telling them what they want to hear is a means of getting laid. There's a lot of sexual energy behind spirituality and religion. I mean, from the priests with the young boys to like these healers uh, in the new age movement trying to say that they need to perform sex magic for healing and that the power of orgasm is healing. Uh, there's a lot of weird sexual energies and I don't know, it creeps me out. Uh, I lost that train of thought. Sex magic is stealing people's chi, ki, prana, mana, spiritual energy through sex, and then using it to enhance your powers of manifestation. Man, I lost it. From demons trying to eat my face to serpent symbology in my dreams that's popping up on people's paintings. There's something going on in my life right now. This guy's father. Uh, I'm going to keep investigating. And I really am and I'm walking a fine line here by, uh, by talking about the different things that I'm noticing. Uh, especially because these people I'm talking about, they are Google. Uh, they are... Tech Valley, and they are deep into shamanism using ayahuasca and hallucinogens and other drugs and these spiritual vortices and occult practices to uh, try to shape the very laws of physics that control the world, let alone create the world and manifest the realities they want into existence. Sometimes I get scared that, uh, you know, if the multiverse is a real thing, which again, in quantum physics, it says it is. 
what if simply by putting my energies and my thoughts and my feelings towards this, uh, my intent is to shed light on it. You know, by learning about a disease, I can learn how to excise the disease. But what if, in that attempt, what if I'm drawing, either drawing myself to these alternate timelines that exist, as if my body were an astral vehicle, or what if I'm just bringing them about, bringing those existences to me? Uh, and that's a scary thought, because the more I think about this stuff, the more like clues and pieces just keep popping up in my life, even here in Hawaii. That guy's father being the founder of Share, that's scary. Why would he even mention he's the founder of Share? No one knows what Share is for like 5,000 miles. They don't know about it in Shasta, the Rainbow Gathering, Burning Man, Sedona, Slap City. They don't know about it in any of these places, but here's some guy randomly telling me here on Hawaii. It makes me a little scared that he, and dude, he even admitted, I'll get him to tell again, I'll do it on a camera. He admitted that he has consented to being used as an experiment by his father for angles of the government to help people and help the world, uh, but didn't know what MK Ultra was. And his brother disappeared, which he mentioned in that video too, his, his thing, uh, his interview, which was amazing. Uh, you know, is it that this guy is a, <laughs> I'm gonna sound nuts, but the thing is I consider all options. Is it that this guy is a plant and he's here to watch me and see what I know and test me? Uh, and if so, for what reason, you know, are they trying to off me? Are they trying to, uh, are they trying to appropriate my energies and like get me to like unknowingly work for them? Is it like just me and my power leading me to these things so that I can expose them? Or is it me like manifesting them and creating them, drawing myself to those universes or those universes to me? I'm a little lost and confused and this sounds a lot like mental illness. And that's what you can think, but maybe the belief systems of the indigenous are true. If you look into it, they believe that mental illness is spiritual awakening and spiritual connectedness. That is not considered mental illness in other cultures. Uh, whereas in indigenous tribes, look this up, this is real because I studied mental health for a long time because of my mom. And indigenous tribes, the, uh, they have the same number of people that become what we call mentally ill, right? But the people who stay mentally ill are significantly lower ratio. So what we do is we stigmatize them, we label them, we push them away, we shove them into homes. And Eastern cultures and indigenous cultures, uh, when someone has a child who is born with what we call mental illness, they're celebrated. They're brought into the fold. They're offered love. They're offered support. The whole community embraces them. And through this process, they learn to heal themselves, they learn to love themselves, they learn to, uh, in the process of learning to heal themselves, they learn to heal others. They then become the spiritual leaders, the shamans of these cultures. Uh, maybe that means that these other cultures are full of shit and that their shamans are just mentally ill people. Or maybe they're onto something. Maybe through social engineering, we're shoving people like my mom into homes uh, when in reality they should be leading us. You know, maybe as they say, we should, uh, embrace them and love them and teach them to love themselves and heal themselves uh, you know maybe the fact that they can't accept the spiritual connections they have uh, it creates a desync and a disfire a misfire and that's what creates what we know of as mental illness all the bad side effects that's what creates the diseases that end up killing them and taking them out is their inability to embrace their true spiritual nature and capacity these are real topics that I'm talking about that are discussed in psychology and modern science, ancient mysticism, etc. Uh, it's on the fringe, but that doesn't mean that it's 100% not real just because it's uncomfortable to talk about. If you're watching this video, you're amazing because you're diving deep with me, but I'm going to go much deeper. You don't even know. Uh, the podcast that I'll be doing on what lurks beneath, 
check out his channel, subscribe to it, What Lurks Beneath. That's going to be intense because there's going to be there's over there's a hundred there's eighty six thousand followers. There'll be over a hundred thousand by the time I do the video, and uh, it's probably going to be four to five times that that watch it. So you're literally talking about a tangible percentage of the United States. Even if it's 0.25 percent of the United States, that's like fucking insane because I'm going to delve into topics uh, that I still have to continue researching on the side so I can like actually have stuff to support it but like topics that I've been intrigued in and following and working towards for a very long time and what lurks beneath yeah I think I might have some clues and I can't wait to share more uh, let's get back to some positive stuff thanks for letting me uh, dive into that shit thanks for diving with me Stay aware. Use critical conjecture. Be a critical conjecturist with me. We can change the world even through simply our awareness. And even if this isn't resonating, just consider, you know? Uh, Einstein said something like, I'll sum it up. Uh, the sign of true, a si uh, one of the greatest signs of true intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing thoughts simultaneously. So be able to consider that this might be true while also considering that this might be bullshit or I might be crazy or I'm just coming up with really creative lies. You can consider all those together and you might be stronger for it. You might grow an intellect. And again, even though this might not ring true at the moment, you might have signs and portents and omens in your own life that start to push you and synchronicities that push you towards the belief that maybe Jeremiah is not completely full of shit. Uh, I love how I waited. I probably purposefully, now that I think about it, I love how I waited until I'm completely sober to mention these things. Uh, but yeah, that's like a 30 minute section just there. I'm going to have like hours of footage each day. I'm going to have to keep either buying these memory cards or putting them all on the cloud or both because I don't trust the Google A team who are really the Burning Man folk who go back to the ancient Druids and Gauls uh, the Magi and the Druids of Eastern Europe that's it for now uh, loving you Ohana